As I mentioned, at the beginning of Mass, we celebrate the Feast of St. John Neumann today. He was born in what's now the Czech Republic just 35 years after our American Revolution in 1811. He only lived to be 48 years old, but in that time, he did incredible things, especially in the field of education. He had this burning zeal to teach the faith. When he was 25, he wanted to become an ordained a priest. He went through seminary. But believe it or not, in Europe at that time, there were so many priests everywhere that they put a moratorium on ordaining priests. And so he learned English and started writing letters to bishops in the United States. He wanted to do missionary work. Finally, the Bishop of New York said, I'll take you. And he came in after a month or so after he was here, he ordained him a priest and assigned him up near Niagara Falls. And he was there for a while and did lots of good work, but got kind of lonely being there all by himself. And so he joined the Redemptorist um, religious order, which had a, a parish in Squirrel Hill, uh, St. Philomena, which was where both Father Terry O'Connor and Father Jay Donahue uh, went to Mass at one time. And he would travel back in the days when there weren't very many priests around. He would travel on horseback all the way from Squirrel Hill, all the way up to St. Alphonsus in Wexford. As a matter of fact, Father Terry told me one time he was going through the baptismal records and saw the signature of, of St. John Lim in there. To think that someone who lived among us was a saint is just amazing. He went on to to become the Bishop of Philadelphia, I think the third Bishop. And he loved God so much that he wanted to teach children to do the same. While he was there in, I think, eight short years, he increased the number of schools from two to 100 and the number of students in the schools by 20 fold, teaching them all about faith in Jesus Christ and a God who loved them so much that he'd send his own son to suffer and die for us. And to be born in such a modest way in a barn surrounded by animals and manure. St. John Newman had a, had a heart for that kind of life. He, he was just a simple person. One time he went to, to visit one of his parishes in Philadelphia in, in the outskirts. The parish priest picked him up on a manure wagon and he sat there on a board suspended over the cargo. <laughs> But he didn't care because he was ministering to people. He loved God so much. He wanted to share that love with others. One of his beautiful prayers was, Lord, help me to love Jesus the way his mother loved him. Help me to love Jesus the way St. Joseph loved him. Help me to have the fidelity and humility to love him the way they loved him. That love is what characterized his ministry. And if we love the children that are among us, regardless of how old they are, it's such a great idea to teach them about that love that the saints had. And no better way than to, to pull out books about the saints or articles about the saints on the internet and talk to them about the stories, about some of the amazing things they did, about thinking about a priest who would ride all day long on a horseback to go just to a place where he would baptize whoever needed to be baptized and do whatever weddings needed to be done and sometimes they'd do the funerals. So many amazing saints that are part of that cloud of witnesses that it talks about in the Bible. God calls each of us to be part of that cloud. And he wants us to teach others, especially the little ones, about the love that God had for us so that one day they can share that love with their children and their grandchildren who have not yet been born.